Hello everyone and welcome back to Jack Scraps and thanks for joining me today for part two of our Hogwarts mini bookcase. In this video, I will be teaching you how to create the bookcase, the book boxes, as well as the little notebooks. I will also be providing any additional information regarding printable templates that I used. All information will be linked down in the description box, so make sure you check there for the information. Please keep in mind that some of the printables that I'm providing links to are copyrights of those individuals and are for personal use only and are not to be sold. So be kind, just download and use for personal use. All right, everyone, let's get started. Now we're going to get ready to create these little notepads or notebooks that uh, I previously showed you. And I thought I would kind of run through all the materials that I used to create these. I did use a download for the cover and I will have that linked down below for you. As well as on the inside, I used paper from the Paper House. And this was one of the cut aparts from the Paper House collection as well. It's not really a collection, it has individual papers. There is a little sticker that I used and I got that from this Harry Potter like matchbook. I picked this up at Walmart. It has great little stickers in it. Oh, I probably showed this in a haul, but it has the little um, badges there. So I thought I could use that on our little pocket. These little notepads came from the Dollar Tree. They are the mini writing tablets. And what I did was I peeled one section off from the back. Don't do it from the front. You just get more of the glue. So peel from the back and then you'll need one little section. Now, of course, there isn't any red. So I use this darker pink that has blue on it and thought that would be good for Gryffindor. In addition, as you notice here on the front, I used an elastic and this is from Tim Holtz. You don't need these. You could tie this with a ribbon or string or make like a traveler's notebook type of binding. Maybe, maybe you don't even want to bind it at all. I did it because uh, the cover does pop up just a little bit. And I just really liked how this looked in the end. Very nice. And then it allowed me to add a little charm. So this little winged key is from AliExpress. If I'm able, I'll try to link that below. I might forget, but that's where I got it. And it's called the wing key. So in case I forget, that's where I got it. And then for Gryffindor, I'm also going to add, well, instead of the key, I'm going to add this because that's what I have for Gryffindor. This is the house that I'm in and I had purchased these. I thought these were so adorable, again, from AliExpress. And again, I'll try to link those. Sometimes things aren't available anymore. So that's why I'm saying I'll try to. Um, they might not be available. So I, you'll also need an eyelet if you're going to do it the exact way that I've done it. Again, you don't have to, this is just a, how I did it. And then of course you'll need a jump ring. Now I see that that's gold, so I'll have to go get a gold jump ring, but I've been using silver on all of these other ones. I've used Ranger Black Jet Archival Ink, and sometimes I did use Vintage Photo, just depended on what I was using. And I think that's it besides the cardstock and all the pieces. So we can go through that now. So to, to create the cover, you're going to need one piece of cardstock that measures seven and three fourths by five and a fourth. I used my We Are Memory Keepers corner tromper at a fourth of an inch and I rounded the corners. Now we're going to score this at three and three fourths and four. 
And then now your base cover is ready. So from Paper House, this is the paper that I purchased. It has all of these great cut aparts on the back side and then uh, the house on the other side. So I cut out just what I needed from the paper. I was very strategic in how I cut this so that I could use or save the images that I really liked. So I cut down here at the bottom, seven and three fourths by five and a fourth. And then what I did was cut out this little journal card to create the pocket. For this, you're going to need one piece that measures three and three fourths by one and three fourths. And we're going to score that at a fourth of an inch on three sides. So I just flipped it from side to side and then you do one long end. And the way I do it is I look to see what I want at the top and then I know to score on the other end. So now we have all of our pieces there. I've gone ahead and printed my covers, which is a printable download. When you get it, it's the actual size for a composition book, the larger ones. Well, I wanted it for the smaller ones, so what I did was go into Photoshop. I created a little um, page, if you will, that was seven and three fourths by five and a fourth. I even took in the rulers and made some marks at three and three fourths and four so that I could lay out the covers because you get one image that is the front and one image that is the back cover. So I brought in the first image and I shrunk it down to fit on the front cover. I left the spine without any of the printable on it. Then I brought in the back cover and I filled up the back part of the cover. And then I actually printed it out and then cut these down so that I would have an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So these measure three and a half by five. Now I would love to share with you my shrunk covers, but because this isn't my template, I just don't know that I can do that. So all I can recommend to you is get the printable, download it, and put it into a software that you can manipulate and take and shrink down these images. Use the base size here, like I showed you, bring in the first one and then the second one and leave the spine empty. Or if you want the pattern to go all the way across, that's fine, go for it. I didn't. So I hope that helped. So let's just run through this again. We have our base cover, we have the inside, we have our front cover, front and back cover, and then this is going to make our little pocket. All we need to do here is, where the two score lines intersect, cut straight across on both ends. And then I do a little mitering up here at the top of that score line. Okay, so now this is ready. And then don't forget to ink if you're gonna ink. I'll just do a little ink, I think I already did. Okay, now that's ready. Additional items that you'll need are a journal card is something that I inserted. So I found this uh, downloadable printable from Muggle Magic and I printed this out on cardstock and I even used the back part. He was nice enough to provide the front and the back image and that will be in my little pocket here. We'll need our little notepad. You're going to need one piece of cardstock that measures one by three and three fourths. And this will be the little piece we add to the back of the cover to slip in our little tablet. And then when you purchase the papers from Paper House, you know, you get these little strips in the end that you cut off. Well, on the bottom of them, I don't have any examples because I've used them all. They had little images that went along with the paper. 
So I cut these out, as you can see here, and took these and wrapped them around the little notebook so that then this color told me which notebook it was, right? When it's sitting in the, the bookcase, you can't see except for this because I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I love this idea. It's just a color, very identifiable. But then you have their logo or mascot there on the front. So that's how I got these. I used the strips from the paper, just cut those out. And these measured one and a fourth by half an inch. And I just made sure to cut this where there was an image on each end and then it was just the color in between so that I can then wrap this around. Now, if you wanna do it where you have the image on the spine, go for it, but as you can see, Gryffindor is too long. So it would be kind of wrapped around. So I kind of like this idea better, actually. It's kind of incognito, right? <laughs> okay, I think I've explained everything that you need to put one of these together. Oh, I'm using my Big Bite, or if you have a hand one, you can use that as well. And I think that's everything. What I'm going to do now is put this all together and I'm not going to talk through it unless you actually need to know something that I'm doing since I've walked through everything, okay? I will be using some score tape and I'm going to put it on the back of probably the cover all over the whole thing. That's how I've been doing it, covering the whole page and then putting this over it like that. There's something about the glue, it gets it a little bit sturdier, and I like the full coverage. And I didn't want to use wet glue, because sometimes when you use wet glue, you get, you can see where you put it. I don't know, that's just what I've been doing. So use whatever glue you like. <laughs> okay, let's get started. If you use these same elastics, they're the six and a half, I think, or six inch, you're cutting off the end, you don't need that. And then you're gonna put this in to where the elastic is going kind of this direction. Don't have it go like that side to side. See how it changed? You want it to go this way where it looks like that and I pull it down to where there's only a little bit left showing, like that. And then I get my eyelet and I shove it in between the two layers there and put it into the hole. so that you can see that. And then I'm going to set my eyelet. So my eyelet is set and of course I move during it and it doesn't look very pretty, but it will still work. 
<laughs> gonna cut off any excess of this that I don't want to see. Okay. Now we can insert So if you don't get one side, try the other side. And then just scoot it down. Trust me, it'll go. You'll have to lip, lift it up over the eyelid down there. Okay, and now we're all set. Now I'm gonna probably add decorative paper to this section. I just haven't figured it out yet. And now we can close this. And add, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add this and get my jump ring for my charm. The way I added this was just put it at the top of the paper, and then I folded this over. Before we get started on the bookcase, I just wanted to mention that the SVG files are from My Scrap Chick and I'll have her um, website and this file linked down below. And I have used this file over and over and over again is all I can say. It is one that I have been glad that I purchased. I have modified it many times for my needs and what I'm creating. And in fact, I took it and modified it for this project today. So even though I have modified it, I will not be able to share my Cricut files with you because I am still using some of her original SVG designs, even though I have modified them. So I don't think I can call them my own, <laughs> but I'll link that for you and you can get the original ones. I will provide all of the measurements for you and you can easily make this by hand. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is a heavy weight cardstock or even craft board that measures six by 12. I'm using craft board by Cricut. We're going to score that at two and a fourth and six and a fourth. Now, when you fold up on the first score line, you don't really need to fold it over and burnish and all that because this is the front of the bookcase. The back piece will be folded up onto that score line and that will be the back of the bookcase. So this is what it looks like when you fold it up, just to give you some reference. So now what I'm going to do is give you all the measurements for the decorative paper for the bookcase. I'm going to start with the back side. So I did a layering piece as well as a decorative piece. My layering piece is Tim Holtz glitter paper. It's the silver gold packet and this measures five and seven eighths by five and five eighths. My decorative piece, which is another paper from Paper House, I actually cut this down. It was a six by six and I cut it down to where it's just right above the gold at the top and the bottom because I didn't really want to lose any of the image. So this one actually isn't a true eighth of an inch smaller and it measures five and three fourths by five and a half. Well, it should be five and a half, but mine's a little bit bigger. So that's the measurement you want, five and three fourths by five and a half. And that will go there. Now, even though this is the bottom or the outside of the bookcase, I always put something on the bottom because I just like it to feel completely done. So I've cut out a piece and this measures five and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So that will go here. And then when you get ready to decorate the front, remember that you might want to turn it around because this will be facing you. 
Here I did a layering piece as well. And this one measures five and seven eighths by two. My decorative piece measures five and three fourths by one and seven eighths. So all the paper to create the book case is from Paper House, except for this one here, the starry one. This is the Witches and Wizard paper from Echo Park. Okay, I paper clipped these on just to kind of show you a moment. So you see, this is the front. That's why you want to make sure your orientation is going in the right direction. So if we turn this over, it will be upside down when you're looking at it this way. So that's the front and there's our back. You can go ahead, cut these and glue these and put these on. For the inside, do not add the decorative paper until we have added our side pieces, okay? So even though I'm giving you the measurements for this and these measurements for the inside is basically the same as the outside, five and seven eighths by five and five eighths for our layer piece. And then the deco piece is five and three fourths by five and a half. The middle piece is five and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And I didn't do a layering piece for that. No one's really gonna see that. And then on the front, I just did one layer because again, no one's really gonna see the inside of the bookcase, but again, I'm just making it complete. And this measures five and seven eighths by two. And that will go there. Okay. Now remember, even though I gave you the measurements, don't glue these pieces on until you have glued on our side pieces. And this is what brings the bookcase together. To create the side panels, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock, which is the same material that you use for the base of the bookcase that measures five and six and a fourth. We're going to score it a half an inch Rotate once to the right and score at a half an inch. Rotate once to the right and score at a half an inch. The next thing we're going to do is measure up from the bottom two and a fourth inches. And what we're going to do, you can use your scissors or your cutter and we're going to go at that point cut at a diagonal all the way up to the first score line up here. Now, if you want, you could actually take your ruler and pencil and draw a line, if that helps. Okay, and now you just cut on this line all the way across. And now you have your panel. So fold and burnish on your score lines. And then what I do here is a little mitering where these two score lines intersect. Cut across, do the same on the other side. And then I also miter the top here. So you're going to repeat the same process, but this time if this was a full sheet, you would be measuring up from the bottom on the left-hand side. So do one on the right, one on the left, okay? And that is your side panels. Okay, so you'll need one for the left, one for the right. They're going to be facing this way, okay? I'm gonna turn this layer piece over because it's very shiny but you're going to need to start with two pieces that are three and three fourths by five and a fourth. You're going to measure up from the bottom two and an eighth inches. And at that point, cut diagonal up to the other corner. So you're gonna start with your full piece that measures what did I say? Five and a fourth by three and three fourths. 
you measure up two and an eighth, and then you're gonna cut diagonal up to the other corner. So then this piece comes away, and you now have your decorative layer for the front, for the left or the right. You're gonna need to do that two times. So for our decorative piece, you're going to need two pieces that measure five by three and a half. You're going to measure up two inches from the bottom, right here, and cut diagonally up to the corner, and then this piece falls away. And that's your decorative piece. Now remember, when you're cutting this, if you cut your left hand pieces first, for your right hand pieces, you may have to turn your paper over to cut them. Because remember, this is kind of a mirror, a mirror image of this side. So one of the pieces, you're gonna have to mirror that or just turn your paper over and then do your cutting and your diagonal cut. Because otherwise what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with like that, right? You don't want that. Flip your paper over, then do your cutting for the right hand side. That's how I do it. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. Oh, and then I cut two pieces that were the same measurement as the layer piece, which I done forget, but you all know, because I just told you. And then that will go on the ins, oh, that will go on the inside. So there's all the pieces. Okay, now at this point, what you can do is go ahead and glue, cut and glue on all of your pieces for your side panels. Once you have that done, we'll come back and attach it to the base of the bookcase, and then we'll add our decorative paper here. I'm adding all decorative paper off screen, and then I'll come back to show you how to put this on, and then I'll add the rest of my decorative paper. Okay, I'm back. I have all my papers on the back glued on, and all my papers for my side panels glued on, and now we're ready to adhere the panels to the base. So it's super simple. You just add adhesive to the outside of your uh, flaps and put it all together. We're gonna start with the bottom flap. You're gonna line this up in between the two score lines. The way I like to do is lift up the side panel and make sure that the edges are touching. Yeah, you wanna square these two off once you got it in place on this side. You know, make sure this is still coming up easily. And then Lift up and make sure these are nice and squared before burnishing real good. Okay, see that? Looks good. Now let's do the other side. Again, make sure you're putting it in between the two score lines and then making sure it's squared off on the edge. And then burnish. Now let's start on the back panel. These two are gonna come up together and meet. They should be as tall as each other. If it's slightly over, it's okay. It's not gonna matter. But basically doing the same thing. Okay, pull these up, square these off, 
See that? Nice and squared. And then burnish that. Getting glue everywhere. <laughs> Looking good. Let's go ahead and do this one. Now I made this design uh, larger than the normal design so that it would fit my little books. So that's why I changed the SVG file. Okay, now for this part, we're just going to add adhesive here and here, and then we'll just fold this down on top of it. Okay, and then we can flip this over to burnish underneath it. Real good on both sides. And there is our box. Now we can glue our piece on the inside the bottom and our back pieces okay you didn't want to do it before because now you can hide the little flaps so I'm going to do that off screen and then I'll be back okay now I'm going to show you how to create the book boxes and what you need is um, one piece of cardstock that measures eight and three-fourths by five and a fourth. You're also going to need one piece of cardstock that measures seven and a fourth by five and three-fourths. Okay, we're gonna score the first piece with the eight and a three-fourths inch across the top, and we're going to score it three-fourths of an inch, and then five. Now let's take our other piece and we're going to score at one and an eighth and six and one eighth. Rotate that once to the right. The short end is across the top and we're going to score at one and an eighth and four and five eighths. We're going to work on the smaller of the two pieces right now. The one with the one and a fourth inch space in the center, that's going to be the cover. So we'll do that in a moment. Let's work on the other piece. So what we're going to do is make a few cuts with the short end across the top. We're going to come down to the first score line on the left-hand side, bottom left-hand corner, and we're going to cut straight up to the first score line going across. We're gonna to come to the next score line and we're gonna cut straight up on that score line up to the first score line going across. Okay, rotate it all the way down to the other end, so the opposite end, do the same thing. On that score line, cut straight up to the first score line going across and repeat. Now let's fold and burnish. So our little tabs are going to go in on both ends and we're going to create a little box. See that? So these little tabs, we're gonna put glue on the outside or the back side. Glue that to the little flap on the end like that and then squares it off and makes a box. Before we do that, we're going to take the little flaps and we're going to do an angle cut and just take off a little bit. See, just a little sliver. <laughs> so do that to each of the little tabs. And now we can do our gluing. So 
So bringing those in, squaring off the sides. And then do the other end. Now let's set this aside and we're going to work on the cover. So we can fold and burnish. Now for the cover, I'm using a printable from Muggle Magic. If I can find where this is free, I'll link it. But I do know that he has changed how he's doing it because people were selling his designs. And he actually is a legit uh, designer for Wizarding World and other subscription boxes. So, you know, he earns a living off of his designs and people were selling them. So he's now, he now has a Patreon where you can join and get his free printables. Some of his uh, free printables are still out there associated with the earlier videos that he's done. I don't know if he's changed them all over or not. But anyways, I got some of his printables and I'm going to use a uh, History of Magic book for this. I have the cover, the spine, which he provided all this, and the back cover, which I think is so awesome. So I'm going to use this. If I can find it, I'll link it below. If not, you can use any type of pattern paper. You could use, if you buy Paper House um, Harry Potter paper, you can use that, whatever you have will work. Don't be limited by what I'm showing you if it's not available, okay? So I'm just going to glue those onto the cover. So for the inside, I forgot to print out a item to go here, so I'll have to do that. But we're going to take our box and that will be glued down on this side. If you just add your adhesive to the back side, glue this down, and this will have an eighth of an inch border around your box. Okay? Easy peasy. That's all there is to it. Now, I do have my Scrap Chicks SVG file, and it does come with this closure, and I will be attaching this closure. Um, if you have the SVG file, you will certainly be able to use these as well. If not, you could add, you know, put in some ribbon before you add your pattern paper in your box. Or if you have another type of closure you want to use, you could do that. You could add ribbon or twine or something to tie around the outside of it. Or don't put one on at all. It's purely up to you. Um, but I use the SVG from My Scrap Chick and I'll be using those. So I will glue my covers on and my box in. I've already told you how to put this together. It's really quite easy. I forgot to mention that in the SVG file from My Scrap Chick, she also provides these little strips. It's like it um, mirrors that of pages. So I took that and made my own backing piece and glued those together so that's what it will look like. I'll be adding these to the sides of my boxes, or at least that's what I think I'm gonna do. So then when you close, let's say this is glued in, when you close this, this will be on top and it kind of gives a real book look, right? So that's what I'll be doing as well. These pieces measure three and three eighths, by one, so you need two of this size. Even if you wanna put pattern paper on your box, that's what you would use. And the largest size is four and seven eighths by one. So if you have the SVG file, you could use these, add them onto the, a solid or pattern paper, glue these onto the outside of the box, or you can just use the measurements that are provided and cut out pieces to add to the box. That's optional as well. I've seen some that don't even decorate the boxes inside, but I, I like to. Okay, so I'm going to put all this together and then I'll be back. Okay, so I am back and my box is completely done. I've glued all my covers on. 
my closure and then on the inside I glued on two images that I found online. One is from Muggle Magic, this Hogwarts library, which I think is adorable, as well as a history of magic book page. And I found that online as well. So this is how it looks once you add on the side pieces. Oh, I forgot to add a decorative piece there, so I'll have to go back and do that. But that's it for our tutorial today. So the next thing I wanted to mention that there were additional printables that I used, such as this one on this book box, as well as this one. And I will have those linked down below as well, where you can find those if they're still available. I'll try to link everything like I know Muggle Magic. I have lots of stuff from him. So I will put all of his items together and I'll try to label them so that you'll understand what they are, you know, such as this skeeving snack box or these little newspapers uh, some of them are from echo park so i won't be including those unless you buy the collection <laughs> um but there might be one for the money and i'll put that in there as well and if i can i'll go back and add these links to the reveal as well in case you want to double check uh, the reveal item against the links I hope that makes sense. So that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like and comment if you did. And be sure to subscribe so that you are the first to get new videos when I put them out. Thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you next time.